Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Secret Base figure preview video. Before we begin I want to say a massive thank you to Ryan Kirkwood for going out in person and snapping these gorgeous high res pictures. Show Ryan some love in the comments below because without him this series literally wouldn't be possible. If you are looking to pre-order your very own copy of the Armoured Batman 2.0 I have popped a link in the description to Pop Collectibles. As always, do your own research. Make sure you are comfortable before buying. I've also included the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. If you are heading down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new figure preview video goes live on the channel. Now, I suppose the writing probably should have been on the wall that this guy was coming when Hot Toys announced their 2.0 version of regular suit Batman from BVS. Because 9 times out of 10, a company isn't going to invest capital into making a bespoke mold for a brand new body unless they have plans to reuse it in the future and then they can recoup their mold costs across multiple releases. So I reckon this is probably not the last BVS Batman that we're going to get from them using this new body. I wouldn't be surprised if we also get a Nightmare Batman 3.0 at some point. Now he does come with a full array of hands and the gestures do look similar to what we got with the previous versions of Armored Batman. If I'm being honest, I think the sculpt work looks a little bit dated which tells me that they're probably just reusing the hands that they gave us with the last ones. Especially when it comes to the detail on the inside of the palm, it looks very waxy and glossy. Next up we do get the heavy duty version of the BVS grappling gun. This is specifically the one that he uses to swing Superman around. We do get two different versions of the kryptonite grenades, one open and one closed. But I think this is a massive missed opportunity with them not giving us a kryptonite gas smoke effect. Maybe if they do end up giving us a 2.0 version of Supes because they teased one in the promo pics for this guy, then he can come with a smoke effect grenade. There are two versions of Armored Batman, there's a standard and a deluxe. The deluxe one comes with some interchangeable battle damage armor pieces, an interchangeable battle damage cape, a diorama display base, and an LED USB powered kryptonite spear. This time they have decided to go with die cast for some, but not all of the armor pieces. I'm of two minds when it comes to die cast. It only really makes a difference when you're handling a figure, when you're feeling it in hand and you can get that tactile sense of the weight that die cast gives you. In the same vein, it's a bit of a gimmick because for the most part we're displaying our figures, we're not handling them. And if you paint plastic well, you can't even necessarily tell that it's not real metal. So TLDR, my biggest issue with diecast essentially is that when you mold something out of metal versus plastic, it's a lot harder to get some of those really fine sculpted details into the metal parts. Whereas with plastic, it's a hell of a lot easier. That was made pretty evident when we had the die-cast version of the Mark 1 Iron Man figure compared to the plastic one, there was less detail in the mold itself. The paint applications were beautiful, but the molds were softer and that's just what happens when you make something out of metal. I'm hoping Hot Toys prove me wrong though because if they can get the look and the feel with die-cast, 100% go for it. So the die-cast pieces are... The helmet, the chest plate, the shoulder pads, and the bottom boot guards. Now I'm going to let you in on a little secret about the 1.0 armored Batman, not the uh, battle damaged one. So back in the day, they couldn't get the likeness rights in time for Ben Affleck, so they approached his stunt double and they secured his likeness rights for the helmeted face plates. And that's why they wanted to do like a redo and make up for that by giving us a battle damaged one with an accurate and likeness approved Ben Affleck battle damaged head sculpt. This time round, they don't have to worry about any of that. All of the face plates actually look like Ben Affleck. I like the array of expressions, and if you go for the deluxe one, you get the battle damaged helmet with the accurate exposed eye on the right side, and both eyes are posable. 
And for the non-battle damaged helmet, it does have LED light up eyes. I do wish they would paint the mole a little bit more prominently though, because Hot Toys, don't be scared. Ben Affleck has that mole. It's supposed to be present and you're supposed to be able to see it. So you can go a little bit heavier with the brown paint apps on the mole. Anyway, so this is the standard chest plate. It's made of die cast, it looks great. And you'll notice the cape is already pre-attached because there's a completely separate cape for the battle damage chest plate. It's more tattered and there are some holes through it. This is also the uh, standard display base. It is done in the same style as the flash display bases. So they are trying to keep their modern DC bases nice and consistent and I am so here for it. It is USB powered, it's got a light up effect. So this is the deluxe diorama display base. And I do have thoughts, which we'll discuss in just a second. But first off, Hot Toys. Stop fucking giving us standard exclusive display bases. The deluxe figure needs to come with both bases. I was on a stream recently and uh, Kiko told me that, well, why would you need both bases? Hot Toys are only giving you one because you can only use one. That's not really up to Hot Toys. Then why would they give us both sets of armor? Why not just uh, only include the battle damage pieces? Or when figures come with two head sculpts, you can only use one head sculpt, right? You may as well only give us one of them. I don't mean to go hard on Kiko like that. I'm just trying to say that there shouldn't be a standard exclusive display base. The deluxe version needs to come with both. It makes sense. You're paying more money. You should get everything the standard one has and all of the deluxe accessories. It shouldn't be one or the other. Now, this base makes sense from a storytelling perspective because it's a little bit of the scene from the Martha warehouse battle, but it doesn't work as a base very well. There's only this little bit of space right around the front for Batman to stand on it. I think that Hot Toys see these more as art pieces than display bases. So maybe they can, going forward, actually start to make them useful as bases by giving us a proper platform for our figures to stand on. Okay, rant over. Let's talk about the armor. So this is one of the biggest differences for me that nobody's actually discussing. This time round, the armor is slightly tinted gold, and I mean like really, really subtly. It's only there when you look at it in contrast to the undersuit. Whereas with the other versions of Armored Batman, the armor was almost the exact same color as the undersuit, so it blended in and it didn't look like there were multiple layers at play. You lost a lot of depth that way. This is, in my opinion, more screen accurate as well. So giving it that warmer tint and then having the silver scratches over the top and the washes in the crevices and the contrasting black gasket pieces where all the armor connects and the gray for the suit, this just looks so much better. And this is honestly my favorite part about this 2.0 armored Batman. Then again, it's not really a 2.0, is it? Because we had the 1.0, then we had the black chrome version then we had the Toy Fair exclusive battle damaged one. So technically that makes this more of a 4.0. Doesn't really matter at the end of the day. That is my biggest takeaway. The armor is more accurate, it's more detailed, and there's a bloody crack in it. So that does tell us that these armor pieces with all of this gorgeous texture on the surface, they made a bloody resin. So that's how they were able to get that much detail in the die cast pieces. So I wouldn't be surprised with the final one if there is a drop in the texture and maybe even a mismatch between the plastic parts and the metal ones. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt for now because I don't like to judge something until we get it in hand. It's just something that I think is kind of a bit of false advertising. If you're saying that pieces are made of die cast and you have all of this texture on the surface, and then you go ahead and 3D print them for rapid prototyping out of resin. That, I think, is a bit of a cop-out. I would have liked to have seen the actual prototype have real die-cast pieces. Now, I am a bit worried about the undersuit, because it's all kinds of wrinkled, it's screen-printed, it's made of that rubbery material, 
and it looks like there are some stress marks like on his bicep right there. You can see how it looks a little bit smoother than it should. Again, we won't know until we get the BVS standard suit and this armored one in hand, and then we'll be able to uh, test it out and hope for the best, I suppose. Now this is the battle damage chest plate. You can tell because uh, there's this huge smooshed section around the front. And the collar part is crumpled where Superman grabbed him in the movie. I'm interested to find out how you swap out the chest plate, the shoulder pads, and how easy it is to remove the helmet. I'm hoping they've gone with a magnet for the helmet and some strategically placed magnets for the shoulder pads and other parts and pieces like the chest plate if it could snap together with magnets rather than relying on little clips or those clear plastic ball joint pieces that they often use for Iron Man switch out shoulder pads. I think we can do away with clear plastic for parts that are supposed to interchange because they do tend to get brittle and you run the risk of breaking them when you're trying to literally just do what you're supposed to by swapping out these parts. The battle damage looks great for the prototype. Now that we know all of this stuff is 3D printed out of resin and you can get the maximum amount of texture as possible out of resin, I am worried. Still, right now, it looks beautiful. The paint applications even more so than the sculpt work because we've got multiple layers of paint, you've got the speckling, you've got the dirt and grime, you've got the schmutz on the surface and then the silver scratching as well. He does look like he has a decent range of motion, especially from what we've seen in the prototype pics, and his cape is wired. So that is another improvement over the 1.0. So too is this hand that he's currently holding the uh, kryptonite gas grenade gun with. I struggled with pretty much every single figure that came with this gun to get them to hold it properly. It was a damn nightmare, but this guy comes with a proper hand that's been sculpted specifically for it. And you can see he's exercising some good trigger discipline there with his uh, trigger finger sticking straight out rather than actually going in the slot that it's supposed to. These armatures and bracket pieces did genuinely move on all of the other versions of Armored Batman. I thinking that it's going to be the same thing with this guy, it'll actually rotate on the circular joints and maybe limit range of motion for certain poses. The Kryptonite Spear was previously an exclusive with the Toy Fair Battle Damaged Armored Batman, so it's great to see it this time round because I'm pretty sure a lot of people didn't pick up the Battle Damaged one and therefore they missed out on this. It's kind of an important accessory to have, so now you have it if you missed out the first time, and it's even better than the first one because this is USB powered for the light up. And there's a little slot between the bits of rubble on the right side of the display base that you can slide it into, and you can have it powered so it'll be on display, you don't have to have him always holding it in your collection. Let's talk about the new and improved battle damaged helmet. I think it is a step up over the first attempt from Hot Toys. It's still not perfect because they went with the Martha expression. Out of all of the expressions they could have gone with, an angry one, a stoic one that maybe just has his teeth gritted, they went with the Martha expression. I have no idea why they decided to go this way. Maybe it was a licensing thing, but... Whoever it was that signed off on this expression with his lips parted and his teeth showing, I don't think this is the route they should have gone. It's still well done, I can 100% see the likeness, skin texture is amazing, the mole is more prominent and it's got moving eyes, but the expression just isn't for me. I've got a custom head sculpt that is just as detailed as this, the likeness is just as good, but it's got an angry expression. So for me, I'm going to pick up two of these guys, one to have displayed as the clean version, replace my 1.0, and the other to have displayed battle damaged with my custom head sculpt on. If it still fits that is, uh, we'll find out eventually. Overall, I'm extremely satisfied with this release. I know I've complained about various different little things, at the end of the day, this figure still is the best, in my opinion, 1-6 scale armoured Batman that has ever existed. 
I'm going to call it what Hot Toys won't. This is a DX die-cast armoured Batman from BVS. The one display base thing, still sore about that. Everything else, I can live with. This, 100%, like I said, is going in the collection, times two. Now, if you are looking to pre-order your very own copy of Armoured Batman, I have popped the link to Hop Collectibles in the description below. As always, do your own research. Make sure you are comfortable before buying. I've also included the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.